Hey, it's Steph. Thanks for watching today's video. I'm going to take you through my face makeup collection. I'm doing this series so you can have a little inside look in my collection and see why I started my rolling project pan this year. It helps me get a little more familiar with my collection because a lot of the times my products are just sitting in my drawers. Um, I don't know what's underneath everything, you know, it's a little refresher for me too. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. And if you do, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. Let's get started. Let's start off with my face primers. I have just some samples that I've gotten from past Sephora orders, so I have this Smashbox Photo Finish, the Hourglass Mineral Veil, I guess two Hourglass Mineral Veil, and then the Maracuja Oil. Um, I don't know if this is a primer <laughs> or if it's skincare. Oh, it says skincare. Never mind. But anyway, I think all of these are open except for this one. This is the by Change Maker. The e.l.f. Poreless Putty Primer. I did use this once, I think, and it was pretty long time ago, so I don't remember how I feel about it. Then I have this number seven Airbrush Away Primer. Then I have this teeny tiny Professional from The Balm. Um, Makeup Forever Step 1 Skin Equalizer. This is the mattifying primer. I have used this uh, quite a bit. I think it would, it's about halfway. Um, and it seems to keep my makeup matte. I might roll this into my project pan when I'm done with this guy. This is my Soap and Glory One Heck of a Blot. I can feel there's like a giant air bubble in this and it won't come out. I'm just waiting for the day <laughs> um, so I can see some progress in this product because I use it almost every time I do my makeup and it looks like I don't use it at all. This is my Milani Soft Focus Glow. I have the shade 03 Bronze Glow. I think I mentioned this in a Get Ready With Me when I use this product, but I didn't know there were different shades and this is pretty dark for me, but it seems to get covered okay when I put my foundation on. And then my last primer is my Milk Hydro Grip Primer. This is amazing for helping your makeup stay all day long. Um, I've only used this a few times, but I really liked it when I did. For face setting sprays, um, most of these are open. These four are open and these two are not. So I'll start with this. This is the new Milk Makeup Hydro Grip Set and Refresh Spray. Um, I've heard amazing things about this. Look how beautiful it is. Oh my goodness. But yeah, it's supposed to kind of work just like the gripping primer. It helps your makeup stay longer. And this is just a sample of the Smashbox Photo Finish Primer Water. I did use up a full size of this a few years ago and I didn't really see a difference in it. This came as like a freebie um, a few years ago in a Sephora order. So I'll probably throw this in um, my panning project after this guy's finished, just so I can use it up. This is my Catrice Matte Finish Prime and Fine Anti-Shine Fixing Spray, and I don't like this stuff. <laughs> um, it's fine, it has a pretty strong scent, and it doesn't really do what it says. Um, it does not keep me matte, it is not anti-shine like it says, but I mean, it's fine, I'll use it up. Um, I'm about halfway through. Next is my Wet n Wild Photo Focus Natural Finish Setting Spray. Um, this is pretty good. I think I have about half left. 
Um, that's a common theme in my setting sprays. I don't know why, I just always move on or just use something else. Then I have these smaller items, um, the Urban Decay All Nighter. This is an OG. I I was gonna say I went through a whole a full size of this, but I did not. I think I've gone through a few like small travel sizes. Um, and it does seem to work and hold my makeup longer. And then my last thing spray is my L'Oreal Paris Infallible Pro Spray and Set. It's a makeup extender, but um, yeah, I don't think I've ever tried this actually, maybe once. Here is my concealer collection. Um, I think all of these are open except for this guy. So um, this is an OG, this Maybelline Eraser or Instant Age Rewind Eraser. I have the shade Cool Ivory. Um, this is very thin, lightweight, but has great coverage. Then I have the e.l.f. 16 Hour Camo Concealer. I have the shade Light Beige. And this is, this is a little too yellow for me, a little too dark for me. So I have to mix in another concealer if I want to use this, but it's super high coverage. Sometimes a little too dry for my under eyes, um, but I make it work. Here I have the CoverGirl True Blend Undercover Concealer. I have the shade L100 Fair Porcelain. This is too light, so I will um, mix this with the e.l.f. one. Oh, I just realized I have another e.l.f. one. Um, but yeah, this is also very full coverage and very hyped up on YouTube. I don't remember my thoughts on it, but I know I've used it before. I just don't remember. I'll just do my other e.l.f. Uh, 16 hour camo concealer. This one is in fair beige. I will put them next to each other. This one definitely matches me better, but um, possibly a little too light. So these two mixed together uh, work well. Here is my Too Faced Born This Way multi-use sculpting concealer. I really like this and I have the color marshmallow. This has really good coverage, but it's not super heavy. So I can wear this on um, like a lighter makeup day or if I have a full face makeup and it still looks great. My Maybelline Fit Me, I have shade 05. This is a newer shade. I remember I went through one of these before and I think it was number 10 Fair, I think it was called. And it's an amazing, concealer for every day. If I'm wearing nothing else and I just want to kind of conceal my under eyes, I'll use this and it blends in seamlessly. Um, here is my Tarte Shape Tape. This color is 22N Light Neutral and this is a little too dark for me so I do have to mix in a lighter concealer with this. It is very full coverage. It's a little bit drying under my eyes, so it's nice to mix with this Maybelline because again, it'll make it a little lighter, but this is so lightweight and this is a little heavier that mix them together, they work really well. Um, my Benefit Boing Cakeless Concealer. I have the shade number 2.5 and I really like this concealer. Um, it blends in really well. It looks really good. I guess it's cakeless. <laughs> I have not noticed any caking when I wear this. Last but not least, I have my NARS Soft Matte Complete Concealer and I have the shade Light One Chantilly. Chantilly, I don't know how to pronounce that. But um, I am getting pretty low on this. I might stick this in my project pan, thinking about it, but it's pretty dried up. Um, you really have to warm this product up if you want to make it look good on your skin, I found. And I will not use this under my eyes. This is only for like breakouts 
or if I want a little more coverage on the rest of my face. So this is my powder collection. I will start with my compacts because I only have two. This is my number seven Lift and Luminate finishing powder and I have the shade Light. And I use this under my eyes, it works really well. This is the Dim Light Ambient Lighting Powder. Um, my Cover FX Perfect Setting Powder. I have the shade Translucent Light. Obviously, I have not opened this yet. I'm saving it for um, when I use up some other powders, but it's nice and full. And I say that if you have watched my Project Pan videos because this Becca, um, what is it called? The Hydra Mist setting powder. When I rolled this into my Project Pan, it was brand new. I hadn't used it yet. And it was like halfway empty. It was mostly air. And I was like, what the heck? I actually do like this powder for under my eyes, but it doesn't seem to help my makeup last any longer throughout the day. So I wouldn't recommend if you have oily skin, but if you have dry under eyes or normal under eyes, this is really good for a setting concealer. Next is my Cody Airspun Loose Face Powder. I have the shade Translucent Extra Coverage, whatever that means. But this stuff has like, oh my gosh, it's so messy, um, a really strong scent. So if you're sensitive to scents, stay away from this. But I highly recommend if you have oily skin because this keeps my oils at bay. Next, I have my Laura Mercier Translucent Loose Setting Powder. And um, I like this powder. I'm just trying to use up other powders. This is pretty full, um, but yeah, I think this is a good powder. I don't know if it's worth the hype and the price, but it's good. This is my Kat Von D Locket Brightening Powder, and I have the shade Petal. This was before Kat Von D separated herself from the brand. Now it's KVD Vegan Beauty. So I don't even know if they still have this. Um, but I got this like years and years ago and you can tell it has a little pink undertone which works pretty well for my skin tone. Sometimes it's a little too pink depending on what I'm wearing, but this packaging is terrible. It is so messy. Now I have my It Cosmetics Bye Bye Pores in Translucent. This is very finely milled powder. Again, I'm just trying to use up my other powders. And then this is the Maybelline Fit Me Loose Finishing Powder. I have the shade 05 Fair. And I actually went through one of these um, entirely. That's how much I love this powder. A lot of people say it's the dupe for the Laura Mercier powder. And I don't really know if I find that to be true or not. I haven't put them side by side, but I just know I really like this setting powder enough to go through a whole container and buy it again. So these are my face palettes. So I have this It Cosmetics Live Love Laugh Vitality Face Disc. This is pretty old. Um, I don't even know if they sell it anymore, but I have Hit Pan on the bronzer and um, I have pretty good dip in the blush, but the blush is really pigmented and it's kind of hard for me to use on my fair skin. And um, the highlighter is just not anything special. I keep this around because my grandmother gave it to me and she has passed away. It's kind of like a sentimental makeup um, product for me, but it's very old and um, I don't know. I'm just not ready to let it go. Maybe I will soon, maybe I won't. And this is my Charlotte Tilbury Filmstar Bronze and Glow. Beautiful. I've never used this. <laughs> um, it's so pretty though. And I really do wanna use it. I'm thinking about doing 
a full face of the most expensive makeup that I own. And I'm pretty sure this is the most expensive like sculpt and highlighter that I have. So you might be seeing this in a video soon. And on the complete other side of the spectrum, this is the Catrice Prime and Fine Professional Contouring Palette. I have the shade 010 Ashy Radiance. <laughs> Lovely name, isn't it? But the uh, contour shade is pretty ashy, so I guess that's accurate. I do like this contour shade. I just like haven't been into specifically contouring my face. I usually just use the bronzer, but to use that product, I might roll one of these into my project pants. I don't know. I don't want to like overwhelm myself with products, so we'll see. Another um, affordable contouring palette, Essence Contouring Duo Palette. I have the shade 10 Lighter Skin. And both of these palettes, I've just heard amazing things about the contour shade for pale skin. Um, and that's why I purchased them because they were affordable and had really great reviews. Um, again, this shade is just really nice. Let me put them next to each other. They're very similar. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Like, why do I do this? I don't remember which one I bought first or last. I guess these two shades are different, but I mainly bought these for the contours. Um, and they're almost identical. I don't get it. If I had made a makeup inventory or um, just been keeping track of my makeup throughout the years, I probably wouldn't have bought both of those. This is my Tarte Hamptons Weekender Contour Palette. This has a highlighter, blush, and a bronzer. I find that these pans are really hard to get into with my brush because they're so small, but they're beautiful. And I think this might become my new travel palette. I was bringing that It Cosmetics uh, Vitality Face Disc, but as I said, it's pretty old. So I think next time I travel, I will bring this with me and see how it goes. Here are all my bronzers. So these are my individual bronzers. Um, I like to separate them from my palettes just to keep them in categories. So I'll start off with my L'Oreal True Match Lumi bronzer. I have the shade 01 Light. This is in my project pan. So here's a sneak peek. <laughs> um, I'm doing really good on this, making a lot of progress and I'm happy about it. This is a really great, just illuminating bronzer like the name implies. Um, this is very soft and, and it's not like pressed very hard so i find that i pick up a lot of product in my brush and sometimes it's too much so you just have to be careful with this if you're fair skinned here i have color pop it says it's a highlighter but obviously it's not i will find the shade of this just from like my past order if i can find it i really don't want to try to pop this out i know some of you're like oh my gosh just pop pop it out but I don't want to so this is a pretty good bronzer um it's very cool tone the Maybelline City bronzer I have the shade 100 and this is a highly recommended bronzer um I like it it's very um user friendly I feel like when I apply it it's not too much um and yeah it just goes on really well not much to say this is an It Cosmetics Bye Bye Pores um, in the shade Light, but I don't believe them because look how dark that is. So I have it in my bronzer category, but I never use this because loose bronzers are hard to blend in my opinion. Um, at least this is pretty hard to blend. And this was a gift, so it's not like I spent any money on it, so I might try to use it a couple more times, see if it's worth the hassle, but um, yeah, I might declutter this soon. 
Next, I have a Lisa Frank bronzer. Um, this is from Glamour Dolls. I honestly don't remember when or why I got this, but this is the Bitten and Bronzed Matte Bronzer. And this is dark. <laughs> I have to be really careful when I use this, um, which is why I don't use it. <laughs> But I, I do want to try it out. Um, maybe I'll throw it in like a shop my stash or my monthly makeup basket and just see how I like it and make a final decision on it. But I just think it's so cute and the nostalgia of it is just hard to part with. And my last bronzer is my Huda Beauty Tantor Contour and Bronzer Cream. I have the shade Fair. And this is is a cream obviously um it's pretty easy to use it blends in pretty well um i'm kind of scared of cream bronzers still because they always seem like they're too intense but then once i get all the rest of my makeup on it looks okay so i i really need to start using this more um i might start like a what is it called? Projects in cream. I think I've been seeing a lot of videos about like panning projects specifically for cream products. Um, so I might start one of those and throw this in there. So be on the lookout for that. Okay, so my blushes, I have my Milani Flowers of Love um, Trio. This is in my project pan and I am doing really well. Making a lot of progress and I really like this formula so it makes it really easy to use and the colors are just perfect. Um, keeping on the Milani, this is the Romantic Rose 01 Powder Blush. I've heard mixed reviews about this. I haven't even opened it yet because I'm waiting um, until I use some of my other blushes. But yeah, I've heard that this is like hollow on the inside. I don't know if that's true or not, but let me know if you guys have tried this, if you like it or not. This is actually like a holiday um, little palette. It has, it's a the Northern Lights Nudes from Bare Minerals. It has a blush and then two eyeshadows, which I totally forgot to include in my eyeshadow inventory, but I really just pulled this out to use the blush. But as you can see, I have used these shades quite a bit. I went through a phase like when I bought this, I don't know, it's probably been like five years now, but um, this was all I wore. I'll get this one out of the way so it doesn't like roll, but this is the benefit go go tint it says on the back like bright cherry tinted lip and cheek stain um and they are very correct it is very bright and if i knew how bright it was i probably wouldn't have bought it um to be honest but i might use this as like um as a blush underneath my foundation let me know if you have tried that technique. I've never tried it and I'm a little scared, but maybe I'll try it in a video coming up. This is my Tarte Rewards um, Amazonian Clay 12 Hour Blush in the shade Quirky. This was like a birthday reward, I think, and I really love this. It kind of switches up my pinks, throws in a little corally, peachy action. Um, and I really like the formula of this. It is pigmented so be careful but it's just a really nice blush to have in my collection i use it a lot when i'm not feeling pink this is my tori bell element blush um haven't opened it obviously but i need to put it in like a magnetic palette but this is in the shade coral yeah coral and actually let me compare it to this very similar um this looks a little more like brighter um which would have been great for summer but i think i'm gonna save it 
for next spring and summer because I have so many blushes that I need to go through. This is also an unused and unopened blush. This is the NYX Powder Blush, and it is in the shade Desert Rose. Looks really pretty. I think I got it at a garage sale, as you can see, um, but it's unopened, so I mean, free game, right? And my last blush is my Honest Beauty Cream Cheek Blush, and I have the shade Rose Pink. This formula is very balmy. Um, I'm still figuring out if I like this or not on my oily skin, but it is a really beautiful color. I just don't know if I like how shiny it is. So these are all my highlighters. Um, I have this ColourPop Super Shock Cheek in the shade Lunch Money. Really beautiful, reflective color. Um, staying with the ColourPop, I have this guy in this Compact. Um, just like the bronzer, I'm not gonna pull it out of the pan. I'm gonna look up my order and see what this was. <laughs> But I ordered it so long ago that um, hopefully I find it, but it looks really beautiful. I'm just trying to use up other highlighters first. Oh my gosh, I almost just dropped it. This is my Mary Luminizer from The Balm. Um, this is currently in my project pan and I'm using it like every day and it's not showing anywhere. This thing will last me forever and I'm so glad I got the mini and not the full size. Here I have the e.l.f. Baked Highlighter in the shade Pearl, no, Moonlight Pearls. Um, I've had this forever. You can kind of tell um, in my shades what kind of highlighters I go for, although I have all these highlighters and like I just started wearing highlighters when I started my project pan. So uh, yeah. And I bought these years and years ago. So this is the J.Cat Beauty You Glow Girl Baked Highlighter. And I have 104 Crystal Sand. I'm pretty sure this was a recommendation that I heard from YouTube. Most of the makeup that I have are from recommendations from YouTube. But um, yeah, I've never used it. Last, I have this Benefit High Beam, and it says it's satiny, what does it say? Satiny pink? Um, yeah, I just don't use it, and I need to use it. Story of my life. So that's it for my collection. I hope you enjoyed watching me go through all of my blushes and bronzers and my highlights. I really don't have all that much in my opinion, but I wish I had less, honestly. I just feel like these products are going to waste and I just need to get better use out of them. Um, again, that's why I started my project pan. So if you enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so I see you in the next one.